Illustrator documents all have at least one layer. You can have up to a hundred layers and within that sub layers and it's all a way to help you organize all the different objects and paths that you have in Illustrator to be better equipped to deal with them. So we're going to explore some different tools that you can use with layers, specifically with the layers panel. Let's open up the layers panel here and you can see there's a lot going on with this document. First of all, we've got a back cover layer and if I cl collapse it, you're going to see that there's some other layers in here. There's really four primary layers and what that allows me to do is first of all I could hide everything on a layer and also I could select everything on a layer. So right away, I've got a lot of options for working with this document. Now this option, these, are, these layers are collapsed. If I expand it, I can see all the details that are in here. I think what I'm going to do is actually pull this panel out. Let's take the whole thing and pull it out. And then we can resize it and really see what's going on here with this panel. The layers panel here. Okay, so I expanded. I can see all these different details and there's actually more options in here. By the way, if you hold down the Alt key and you click on this icon, it allows you to collapse everything inside of it. So the Alt key doesn't just collapse and expand, it collapses and expands everything. So there's my Alt and expand everything, Alt collapse everything as opposed to just expand and collapse without the Alt key and start drilling down to see the different pieces. Now when I'm working with layers, one of the things that I can do is I can give it any name I want. In fact, a new feature in version um, 6 is that I can just quickly change the cover or back or change the name just by double clicking. That's really handy. But if I double click on the, the, the name here, not quite on the words, but a little bit let over, I get some options for working with the layer options and I could change the color. For example, there's, this text is pretty blue and, and I may want to make it a slight different color to make it stand out. For example, magenta. I also have some options. Do I want this to be a template, show, preview? And here's what these means. If it's locked, if it's, well, template's a little special. Template does some extra things where it locks and shows. But if I want to lock a layer, it means that I can't make any edits to it. I'm simply viewing it. This is the visibility. This is essentially the eyeball. Is it going to print or not print? And then also, um, can I see it in my preview? And if I wanted to fade it out so that it's not quite as, um, as visible, I can make some, some changes there too. That's again effective with our templates. I'm going to click on OK. So all I'm really doing is changing the bounding guides there. And now I've got these pink guides around it, which maybe makes this stand out more than the blue ones. And when I expand it, I can actually have these different options in here have different colors. And what we have here is, is also we have sublayers. So in the back layer, there is a sublayer called bottom band. And it's another way of selecting information. And that even has another sublayer for the ISBN details. And so each of these layers can have their own colors and they can have their own elements. Now to create a layer, cancel that out. To create a layer, I can simply click here and at the bottom, I can create a new layer. It's going to give it a default uh, name and a default coloring system. If I hold down Alt and I click, I can actually create a new layer and then have the options to name it, color it, set it up, etc. If I didn't want any of these layers, I could also select it and delete, or I could drag straight into the trash can to delete it that way. Now we also saw that in addition to the layers, we have an option to create a sublayer, and that's going to be a layer within wherever we might have been within that structure. So if I was right here in the back layer, maybe right here, sublayer, it's going to create a sublayer within that structure and depends on where I happen to be where that sublayer is going to go. Now I can take this sublayer and I can actually promote it. If I didn't want it to be a sublayer, you can pull it out and you can bring it back in. So you can change these and technically it's just a layer. It's, it has to do with whether it's nested or not. So it's just a shortcut of nesting it. But it does give you some options for working with the objects. And then within those layers, you can place different objects or not. And you can always remove them 
as well. Now with these, with these layers, I can also do a couple things here is I can lock or I can show. So here's an object that has been locked. And so when I'm trying to make changes, it's not changing. If I were to unlock that, you can see it's this blue area here. And because it's locked, it means that I'm not going to accidentally move it when I'm trying to make changes. There's no way to select it. If I unlock it, I can select it. You can also lock or hide an entire layer. Here's some guides. And maybe I just want to lock this, these guides because I don't want these guides to move. And so they're not, they're just, they're locked themselves. If I expand it, I can see the other individual elements. It's grayed out because everything is locked. Let's take a closer look here at the dropdown. And in the dropdown, we have some different features. And one of the features that we have is panel options. Oops, let me try this again. Here we go, panel options. And with panel options, we can um, change the size. So right now we have a very small row size. I'm going to change that to medium and click on OK. And all of a sudden you have a little bit more room. Now obviously this has a lot of layers. Let's go ahead and Alt click to collapse everything. It has a lot of layers, but it's a little bit handier because now I can actually see some of those thumbnails. I go back here to panel options. I could make that a little bit larger. I could also control how the thumbnails are going to be visible too. But let's try large. And again, it's even easier to see. But again, with 100 layers and you get the sub layers in there, it just depends on what is works for you. Now I could also take elements, for example, here's all the elements that are part of the bottom band here, the ISBN, select all that element. Those objects are selected. And we have some options in here where we can merge and flatten, etc. Now merging is something that you can only do with layers themselves, not with actual objects. So I, don't, I need to select multiple objects or multiple layers in here. But if I wanted to merge the bottom band, and I wanted to merge that with these items. So I'm just selecting these, and it's not necessarily selecting the objects, I'm selecting the layer elements. Now I can merge these selected items, and you can see how everything becomes part of the bottom band sublayer, and they all get merged together. It's also an option where you can separate them out, and you can, you can choose to um, collect things in a new layer or to split them up you have some options to do that as well. If I were to select these elements here, collect a new layer, there we go. I'm going to move over to this file, and this file takes advantage of template layers. And a great way to use template layers is when you want to have some artwork that you want to trace. And so these files, or these layers, are actually template layers. If I go and double click, and you can see the template, it locks and it shows everything. They do not print. They are locked. They're visible, but for the purpose so that we could easily trace over them. It has a slight different look and feel to it, but when I hide it, then I can see what's been drawn as opposed to the original artwork. And again, if we were going to print that, they would not print. Um, if I uncheck the template, then I see them as regular pieces of artwork. You make those changes there too. A little bit easier to see. We were looking at the option for the Alt, and you saw the Alt gives you some great ways of expanding, collapsing. Well, there's a few other features that you can take advantage of with the Alt, and that has to do with the visibility and with also the locking. So go ahead and Alt and collapse everything. If I lock something, great, locks it. If I Alt click, I can lock everything else. So this is, this is without the Alt, and this is with the Alt. 
And let's start with the eyeballs. That's without the alt, and here's with the alt. You can see it's doing the opposite. Another nice thing you can do is you can drag straight up and down, so it's an easy way to quickly lock or hide elements just by dragging and dropping them. So whether it comes time to create a new layer or name the layer or move layers from spot to spot, oh, these are locked here, move layers from um, into different layers and re-nest them, if you will, you can make those changes and sometimes even collapse or expand to be better off for nesting or grouping information. Expand that out, then I can nest it in. And it makes it a lot easier for you to work with all the pieces with your upper layers, your sub layers, and take all those objects and make them more uh, meaningful so that when you're doing your, your complex re-editing, you have some great tools to take advantage of. Okay, well now it's time for a pop quiz. Which attribute is associated with template layers? A, locked, B, dimmed, C, don't print, D, all of the above. The answer is D, all of the above. Template layers are great when you want to place, for example, artwork or images that you're going to trace over that won't print, that's locked, and perhaps dimmed. 